With this lecture we begin our study of set theory and in this section we'll talk about some of the basic concepts. Um, you'll find as you study more and more mathematics that basic working definitions, um, theorems, and even entire branches of mathematics are best formulated using the language of set theory. So by the term set we mean a collection of objects and we call the objects in the set its elements or its members. If A is a set, then in order to indicate that uh, X is one of its elements, we use this notation here. And to indicate that X is not an element of a set, we use this notation. Equality of sets is defined in this way. Since a set is made up of elements, then we say that two sets are equal if they have exactly the same elements. Now there are various ways of notating sets, and we're going to describe four of those ways. Um, the first one is the use of special notation, uh, there's listing notation, there's set builder notation, and there's interval notation, so we'll talk about each of these in turn. Uh, we have these special symbols that we've already made use of in this course to indicate uh, various sets. And we also have this notation here, which is um, a zero with a sideways slash through it. Um, I hope that you don't use this notation to indicate the number zero, um, because it's almost universal in mathematics that this symbol is used to denote the empty set. The empty set is the set that has no elements at all. We also have something called listing notation. So what we do is we make use of a pair of brace brackets and then separated by commas we list the elements of the set. So here's an example. If you want to notate the set of all even integers from 5 to 20, you can do it in this way. You see the brace brackets and you see the commas. So the elements of the set are all of the things separated by those commas. Here's another example. You see the brace brackets, and so in between the commas, there are two commas here, we have the element 1, this object here, and this object here. So those are the elements of the set. There are three elements in the set. The element 1, the element given by this, and the element given by this symbol. So you really have to take this absolutely literally that these are the three elements of the set. Uh, so for example 2 is not an element of that set because 2 is not one of the things that are separated by those commas and similarly 3 is not an element of that set. We can also use listing notation to notate certain countably infinite sets. For example, here we're listing or we're notating using listing notation the set of natural numbers. By putting the three dots at the end it indicates that it's an infinite set, that the pattern continues. Here you see we're doing a similar thing by notating the set of integers by a listing notation. By having the dots go on either end it indicates that the pattern continues forever. Now here's an example where we look at the meaning of equality of two sets. If you look at this set here, and you look at this set here, and you ask yourself, what are the elements of the set on the left? You'd have to say that 1 is an element of the set on the left, and 2 is an element of the set on the left, and you can't tell me any other elements other than 1 or 2 in the set on the left. And so the only elements are 1 and 2, and that's exactly the same as the elements of this set. And so these two sets are viewed as being equal. In other words, it doesn't matter that you've written an element more than once. It's still the same set as this. On the other hand, these two sets are not equal because this symbol here, what we would call the set consisting of the element 1, is an element of the left-hand side but it's not an element of this set, and therefore those sets are different. Now we talk about what's known as set builder notation. 
So this is the standard set builder notation. And the way you read this when you see it, the way you know that you're dealing with set builder notation, you'll see two brace brackets, and you'll see this colon here. So that tells you that you're dealing with set builder notation, and the way you should read it is you should say the set of all x in the, u in the universal set u such that, and then you'll have some condition which de is described by this open sentence p of x. It's the set of all x in your universe um, s for which p of x is true. So note that in the, this notation, a typical element of the set is indicated immediately after the first brace bracket, and the condition that makes it in the set is what's given after the um, colon. So for example, we can use this set builder notation to indicate the set of rational numbers. The set of rational so when you see this brace brackets and you see the colon, you should read this as the set of all real numbers x such that there exist integers a and b such that x is equal to a over b. Another way of indicating the same set, remember we said that a typical element of the set is listed immediately after the brace bracket. So here you see we've got the brace bracket. Um, a typical element is a over b. Um, so the set of all things of the form a over b in the real numbers such that a and b are integers. That's another way of describing the same thing. Or we can describe the set of odd integers using set builder notation. You see the brace brackets and the colon, so you read this in words as the set of all integers x such that there exists an integer k such that x is equal to 2k plus 1. Another way of saying the same thing is it's the set of things of the form 2k plus 1 in the set of integers such that k is an integer. Okay, so this is what a typical element looks like, and this is the condition on the variable that appears. k has to be an integer. And finally, we have what's known as interval notation. So this is something that you've seen a lot in your calculus classes. And we have, I guess, eight different ways to describe intervals. You can have these bounded intervals, so these are all bounded intervals, and we can have these unbounded intervals. Um, and we've described each of them using set builder notation. So this is what? It's the set of all real numbers x, such that x lies strictly between a and b. And when we have this uh, closed bracket, um, we include the endpoint. So this is the set of all real numbers x, such that x is bigger than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. Uh, this is called a closed interval. This is called an open interval. And these two are, are called half-open, half-closed intervals, where we include the left endpoint, but not the right endpoint for this one. And for this one, we don't include the left endpoint, but we do include the right endpoint, and that's done by means of these less than or equal to signs. And if we don't want to put an upper bound on the right endpoint, we can put infinity. So this is the set of all real numbers x, um, such that x is bigger than b. <clears throat> and we have similar kinds of other such intervals uh, that we can define using set builder notation. Please note that the interval notation refers to subsets of the real numbers, uh, not integers. And so, for example, when we write something like this, we mean the set of all real numbers x that are bigger than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 2. There are infinitely many, uncountably infinitely number of such x's, which satisfy that. It's an infinite set. Um, it does not refer to the set of integers between 1 and 2.